so it's time for Tell Me a Story. And today we're going to enjoy um, Diary of a Wimpy Kid by Jeff Lincoln called The Getaway. Sunday in December. Worst part of having someone tell you about their vacation is trying to pretend you're happy for them because no one wants to hear about all the fun they didn't have. The only vacations I want to hear about are the ones where things went wrong. That way I don't feel bad for missing out. Well, my family just got back from vacation. And believe me, if I could have stayed home, I would have, but I didn't have a choice. A few weeks ago, this vacation wasn't even supposed to happen. We were just having a normal December and I was really looking forward to Christmas. My mom and dad were getting all stressed out about everything we had to do to get ready for the holidays. We were way behind on decorating the house and nothing was going the way it was supposed to. I'm sure we could have gotten our act together in time for Christmas. But one night an ad came on TV that totally turned our holidays upside down. Escape to luxury, escape to paradise. The commercial was for this place called Isla de Polaris, which is where mom and dad went for their honeymoon. And the reason I know that is because every time an ad for that place comes on TV, the two of them get all kissy face and mooch. It makes me uncomfortable thinking about mom and dad before they had us kids. And I wouldn't have to if mom didn't break out their honeymoon album every year on their anniversary. The night before that ad came on, mom and dad made an announcement. They said that this year we were going to skip Christmas and all go to Isla de Polaris instead. When I asked how we were going to get our gifts to the resort, mom said the trip was our gift. I thought that sounded like a terrible idea. And I was surprised dad was on board with it. He usually doesn't like to spend a lot of money. And I was sure this resort was gonna cost a fortune. But he said he was sick of the cold weather and he wanted to escape to someplace warm. Personally, I don't have a problem with cold weather. In fact, generally speaking, the worse it is outside, the happier I am. I figured Manny and Roderick would help me talk some sense into mom and dad, and we put a stop to this idea, but those guys weren't any help at all. So I had to accept that we weren't gonna have a normal Christmas at home. But what I really didn't like was that we had to fly to this place. I'd never been on a plane before, and I wasn't crazy about the idea of locking myself in a metal tube. Nobody else seemed worried, though. And two weeks later, on a night when we should have been hanging up our stockings and sitting around the fire watching Christmas specials, we were packing our suitcase for this island getaway. Monday, we left the house around 8 on the morning of Christmas Eve. Dad was pretty uptight because he wanted to leave an hour earlier, but mom said he was being ridiculous and we'd get to the airport in plenty of time. It was only about 20 degrees outside, but Roderick was already dressed for vacation. It turned out dad was right. We should have left earlier. Apparently Christmas Eve is one of the busiest travel days of the year. So the roads were choked with families driving to see their relatives. I 
nobody really seemed to be in the Christmas spirit either. The airport 15 miles honk, honk, honk. What made things a lot worse was when it started to snow. After that, things slowed to a crawl. Mom and dad started arguing over what time we should have left, and dad almost missed the exit for the airport. He had to cut across three lanes of traffic, which did not look easy. When we reached the airport, the main parking lot was full. That meant we had to park in the economy lot, which was pretty far away. Dad said he dropped the rest of us off at the crib, at the curb <laughs> with all the luggage and then come meet us after he parked. When we got to the passenger drop-off area, it was complete chaos. We tried to unload our bags, but the cops weren't letting anyone stop for more than 30 seconds. And that just stressed everyone out and made things worse. Tweet, 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 tweet. I had to get back in the van so I could help dad with the rest of the bags. Ordinarily, that kind of thing would have been Roderick was, or Roderick's job. But since he was dressed for 80 degree weather, he got out of it. He was lucky he did too. When we got to the gate for the economy lot, dad couldn't reach the ticket from his window. So he made me get out of the car to grab it. Unfortunately, I didn't notice that there was a giant slush puddle on my side of the car until it was too late. After we parked, we rolled our bags to the nearest shuttle stop, which wasn't a lot of fun. The sign said the shuttle bus to the main terminal came every 10 minutes, but there was no room for us in the bus shelter, so we had to wait outside in the freezing cold. 20 minutes went by without a bus, and Dad started getting really anxious about the time. He said we were just going to have to walk to the terminal, which was about a mile away. Chatter, 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 chatter. I would have tried to convince dad to wait a little longer, but my stock was starting to turn to ice and I didn't want to get frostbite. Sure enough, once we got about a hundred feet from the shelter, the shuttle bus pulled into the parking lot. We tried to get the driver to stop, but he just blew right by us. So we ran to the shuttle stop, but we didn't make it back in time. Now dad was really worried about missing our flight. I told him maybe missing the flight wouldn't be the worst thing to happen, but he didn't seem to be in the mood to hear what I had to say. Room. By the time we got to the terminal, we were both soaking wet and miserable. So when a pickup truck almost hit us in the crosswalk, it made dad really mad and he let the driver know. That just made the driver mad and he pulled his truck over and stepped out of his vehicle. We didn't stick around long enough to talk things over with this guy. We ran in the opposite direction and blended in with some people standing on the sidewalk until the coast was clear. Dad told me I could learn a lesson from this, which was to never lose your temper and do something stupid. But I took away a different lesson where when Hefley gets in trouble, Hefley's Ron. The rest of the family was waiting inside the entrance to the terminal. Mom wanted to know what took us so long and Dad wanted to know why she hadn't gotten in line with Manny and Roderick and held a place for us. It took 20 minutes for us to get through the check-in line, but when Dad put our big suitcase on the scale, the person at the counter said it was too heavy. It was going to cost extra money to check it. But Dad said the airline was ripping us off, and we weren't going to give them an extra nickel. So we took some clothes out of the suitcase and stuffed them into our carry-on bags. By the time we got everything sorted out, 
we had a half hour to get to our gate before our flight started boarding. And when we got to the security area, it was a total zoo. There were two lines, one for families and one for business travelers. I guess dad usually gets to go through the business lane when he travels to work. So he didn't seem to be too happy about being stuck with the rest of us in the family line. Anytime you add the word family to something, you know things are gonna be bad. And trust me, I've been to enough family restaurants to know what I'm talking about. We waited in the security line a long time and we finally made it to the front. But then some kid a few rows behind us started pressing the buttons on the pole that poles that hold the barriers together. All of a sudden, there was nothing keeping the line separated. And for a second, no one moved. But then things completely fell apart. By the time the security agent got all the zip barriers reconnected, we ended up at the back of the line and the family with the kid who caused all the trouble was at the front. I thought we were going to miss our flight. So I didn't really see the point of going through security. The dad said sometimes they leave the gate open until the last second and we might still make it. Finally got to the front of the line and we put our bags on a conveyor belt. Then we took off our coats and shoes and put them into some plastic bins. Many, Annie said that the rest of us were doing and he started taking off his clothes too. Luckily, mom noticed in time and stopped him before he could go any further. Annie wasn't finished causing problems though. Apparently, he thought the conveyor belt was some kind of ride, and he was really upset when he found out that it wasn't. The people behind us were getting frustrated. We weren't moving, but we were being held up by the guy in front of us. He had to remove everything he had on that was metal, and it was taking him forever. Roderick told me these machines see through your clothes and then someone checks the screen to make sure you're not trying to sneak by with anything dangerous. All I can say is I wouldn't want to be the person with that job. It turns out the x-ray machine that sees through our clothes is only for grown-ups and kids go through a metal detector instead. Still, I wasn't going to take any chances. Once we got through security, we grabbed our stuff from the conveyor belt and took off. Our gate was down on the lower level, so we had to take the escalator. We couldn't even do that without causing a major problem. Manny's stuffed animal got stuck in the bottom of the escalator and he had to press the emergency stop button so mom could pull it free. Dad checked his watch and said we might still make it, so we ran for our gate. But the gate was all the way at the other end of the terminal, and we knew we couldn't make it in time on foot. Just then, a cart for handicapped passengers came along. Dad stopped it and asked the driver if he could hitch a ride. The rest of us got on board before she could say no. After that, it was smooth sailing. The terminal was pretty crowded, but people moved out of our way when they heard us coming. Oh. The driver dropped us off at our gate. The door was closed. I thought that we meant we had missed our flight and we could turn around and enjoy a nice Christmas Eve at home. But it turned out that the flight was delayed. And so all that stress was for nothing. The reason the front flight was delayed was because of the bad weather. And it was gonna be another hour before we got on the plane. 
you look for a place to sit down in the boarding area, people, people were hogging the seats. Mom told me that once we got on the plane, we'd be in the air for about six hours, which was new to me. I asked her for some money and I bought a couple of magazines, some snacks and headphones at a shop near our gate. The only thing I needed that the store didn't have was socks. My right sock was still soaking wet from stepping in that puddle. So I went into the bathroom to wring it out in the sink. When I was done, my sock was still damp and I really didn't want to put it back on my foot. The bathroom had one of those high powered hand dryers and that gave me an idea. Couldn't wait to get back home and start making some money on this idea. I figured I could make a killing on rainy days. <gasps> Here we're drying out socks. <laughs> The only problem with the hand dryer in the airport bathroom was that it was a little too powerful. My sock started smoking and then it went flying. Flush. I just <laughs> went into this, the urinal apparently. I decided I'd just get a new pair of socks at the resort because there was no way I was going to wear something I had to fish out of a urinal. When I came back from the restroom, they were making an announcement at our gate. I figured they were ready to start boarding the plane, but they were just letting us know there was another delay. And it went on like that for the rest of the day. Apparently, this storm was causing problems everywhere. And the plane we were supposed to fly out on was stuck at some other airport. I was starting to worry that my electronic device was going to run out of juice while I was on the plane. So I looked for a place to charge it. But I guess everyone else was thinking the same thing charging station. <laughs> the only available outlet was in an awkward place. But when your battery is at 15%, you got to do what you got to do. There's a ladies room apparently. Our plane finally arrived at the gate and all the passengers who were on it got off. But if flying is supposed to be fun, never know it from the way these people looked. Wow, look at their faces. The gate agent on the loudspeaker said we'd be boarding shortly. Then she said our flight was overbooked and they needed a few volunteers to give up their seats. She said that whoever volunteered first would get $300 and a free night at the airport hotel. I didn't need to hear another word. I got to the desk before she even finished with her announcement and I said I was her guy. Unfortunately, mom wouldn't let me volunteer and nobody else stepped up either. So the gate agent increased the offer to $500. Some woman snapped it up right away. I just hope she enjoyed spending my money. After that, the agent made another announcement. She said the flight crew on our plane had worked too many hours because of all the delays, and we had to wait for a replacement crew to come in before we could take off. Now everyone at our gate was mad because what was supposed to be an early flight was turning into an overnight one. When the new flight crew finally arrived. They didn't look happy to be there. That's probably because they were expecting to spend Christmas Eve at home. So I knew exactly how they felt. After the crew got on board, they started letting passengers on the plane. My family got to go first because they let people with young kids board before anyone else. But the gate agent stopped me at the door. 
she said my carry-on bag was too big to fit in the overhead bin. So it had to go down below with the rest of the luggage. That was fine with me because I didn't want to deal with my bag on the plane anyway. When I got on board, I was pretty impressed. The seats were a lot bigger than I expected and they were covered in real leather. I asked mom what row we were in but she said we needed to keep moving. She said this was the first class section and our seats were in economy. But the economy section wasn't half as nice as first class. The seats were packed together and they barely had any cushioning. Mom said our seats were toward the middle of the plane, so we headed there. But dad hung back in the first class section he said he got upgraded because of all his frequent flyer miles and that he'd catch up with us after we landed. Mom didn't seem happy about this news. She said it wasn't fair for him to be in first class while we were in economy. So she said we'd all take turns sitting on dad's seat during the flight. But dad said the rest of us weren't experienced travelers like him and we wouldn't even know how to act in first class. Luckily, there were other passengers trying to board, so mom and dad couldn't get into a full-blown argument right there in the aisle. Dad sat down in his seat, and we went to find ours. The rest of us were all in the same row. Mom, Roderick, and Manny sat on one side of the aisle, and I had the middle seat on the other side. Roderick tried to get me to switch with him so he didn't have to sit by Manny, but I was happy right where I was. I didn't have a whole lot of leg room, but on the other hand, than that, it wasn't so bad. All the other passengers boarded after us, and people seemed pretty stressed trying to get their stuff into the overhead bins, so I was glad they took my bag bag to the gate. Everyone put away their bags and sat down in their seats. The pilot made an announcement that the doors were closing and the seats to my left and right were still empty. I couldn't believe my luck. As soon as we took off, I was going to stretch out across all three seats and get myself a good night's sleep. It was even better than being in first class. <sighs> but Right before the doors closed, one more couple got on board, and they had a baby with them. <laughs> Must have run. I didn't think these people would be in my row because there were only two empty seats, but the baby sat in his mother's lap. See, if I were in charge of the airline, the rule would be one person per seat because if this couple had twins, it would have been completely out of hand. I asked these parents if one of them wanted to switch seats with me so they could be next to each other. But the mother said she liked the window and her husband said he liked to be on the aisle. Right after that, the plot came, the pilot came on the intercom. He said that before we took off, there'd be a brief safety video to show us what to do in case of an emergency. I was already nervous about flying to begin with, and I didn't like hearing there might be an emergency. So, so, um, when the safety video played, I paid attention. But as far as I could tell, I was the only person who did. Everybody else completely tuned out. The beginning of the video was just basic stuff, like how to fasten a seatbelt. But after that, it got serious. The video's narrator said that if there was a loss in cabin pressure, oxygen masks would drop from the ceiling. Well. I don't know what cabin pressure is, but I didn't like hearing that we might lose it. 
people in the video didn't look bothered at all when the oxygen mask dropped down low. In fact, they looked kind of happy about it. Then the video got even worse. The narrator said that in case of uh, water landing, we needed, we'd need to evacuate the plane. Now, I was really freaked out. I thought the whole point of an airplane was that it was supposed to stay in the air. The safety video said there were emergency exits on the plane and the people sitting in the exit rows would need to open the doors so everyone could get out. The emergency exit was one row behind me and I realized the people sitting there weren't paying any attention to the video at all. So. I got them to put down their magazines and listen up. Flight attendant didn't seem bothered that no one was watching the safety video. I figured they probably had their own exits. So if there was any trouble, I was going to follow them. Blush. <laughs> the video showed the plane in the water with inflatable slides coming off emergency exits and they actually made it look fun. Whee! Then the video said our seat cushions doubled as flotation devices and each one had a whistle attached to it. Now I had a question. So I pressed the button above my seat to get the flight attendant to come over. What I wanted to know was if we landed in shark infested waters would it really be such a good idea to blow the whistle? It felt to me like we'd basically be inviting the sharks over for a free lunch. Tweet! Flight attendant said I didn't need to worry because all the seat cushions were coated with shark repellent, so they wouldn't even come near us. I was pretty happy to hear that. But now I'm wondering if he was pulling my leg. I don't really get the point of the whistles, though. It's not like anybody's going to hear them if you're in the middle of the ocean. And if you're lucky enough to have a cruise ship pass by, believe me, those guys aren't stopping to pick you up. Tweet, tweet, tweet. After the safety video was over, I felt exhausted. And we hadn't even taken off yet. But a few seconds later, the plane started rolling down the tarmac. And the next thing I knew, we were in the air. Vroom. I'm not going to lie. I had my eyes shut during the entire takeoff. And I didn't even realize I was holding my breath until I almost passed out. Once we leveled off, the couple sitting in my row started feeding their baby. I was already nauseous from the take on, and the smell of mushy peas didn't help things. Here comes the choo choo. I thought I might actually throw up, but I didn't know what to do. Then I noticed this white paper bag in the seat in front of me, and I figured out that's exactly what it's for. Flight attendant already seemed annoyed with me. Though, so I knew he wouldn't be too happy if I handed him a bag of vomit. Here you go. <laughs> Somehow I managed to get through the feeling without throwing up. But I wish I could say the same for the baby. Belch. After the lady cleared it, cleaned it up, she reached into her bag and gave the baby a couple of toys to play with. One of the toys was a plastic hammer. And as soon as the baby got that thing in its hand, it started pounding on the window. Quack, quack, quack. I would heard that if a window on a plane breaks, everything inside gets sucked outside. And that didn't seem like a good way to go. So when the lady's head was turned, I swiped the hammer from the baby, tucked it under my seat. Unfortunately, that set the baby off. It turns out nobody likes a crying baby on a plane, and everybody started shooting this dirty look. Luckily, the lady had a bottle in her bag, and 
and quieted the kid down for a while. I was getting kind of hungry myself, so I pressed the button for the flight attendant and asked when we could expect to get fed. But he said meals were only for first class passengers, and he gave me a bag of peanuts to hold me over. Here you go, us. That's when I remembered the snacks I bought before we got on the plane. But then I remembered that they were in my carry-on bag, which was stowed down below. I guess mom must have been thinking about food too, because as soon as the pilot said we had reached our cruising altitude and we were free to move about the cabin, mom unbuckled her seat and went up to first class with Manny just in time for the felt something cold and clammy touch my left elbow, and then something else touched my right one. The guys behind me had taken off his shoes and socks and split his feet through the spaces between the seats. So I guess this guy decided it was okay to use my armrest as his footrest. I was starting to feel boxed in, and then the person in the seat in front of me tilted his seat all the way back. So it's just a few inches from my face. I tried to tilt my seat back, but I couldn't find the button to do it. So I called the flight attendant and asked him where the button was, but he told me the seats in our row didn't tilt back because they blocked the emergency row. Now I was starting to sweat. I thought I'd read a magazine to take my mind off feeling crap. The only thing the seat pocket in the seat pocket was a catalog for all this stuff nobody reads. Pizza blanket. Choo choo. Nighttime craving. Satisfy them with a pizza blanket, edible bedding that's warm and tasty. Comes in pepperoni, extra cheese, and anchovies. Snooze. You just can't sit through all the boring eating snooze glasses make you look quite awake, even when you're anything but phone bubble. Protect your phone on rainy days with this clear plastic bubble. People on either side of me were watching a movie, so I figured I'd turn my screen on and check it out. The movie looked like a comedy, but my headphones were in my bag. And it was hard to understand what was going on without them. <laughs> I changed the channel to see what else there was to watch. One channel had a show for little kids, and the baby next to me got interested in what was on my screen. And when I changed it to something else, the kids started falling. So, I hope you enjoyed Tell Me a Story, the first half of The Getaway by Jeff Kenny. And we return on Monday at 12 o'clock. Um, and we will continue on with um, Diary of a Wimpy Kid, The Getaway. Jeff Kenny. See you then. Goodbye.